small blue puzzle piece because I found it up here on the stage and I know that would be very frustrating if you have all the pieces <laughs> together except for this one. So, you know, keep your ears out. Yeah, probably. So I bet they're frustrated right now. Um, so this is my third year doing stand-up at the Fringe, which Woo! is incredible. Um, and this year I wanted to try something different. I wanted to see if I could write the show in under a week. Which you can, surprise. I didn't actually want to do it. I can't help it. I'm like a procrastinator. It's not my fault, though. That's the thing. It's like, I feel like, and there's a lot of people of my generation here, so I feel like I'm talking directly to you, but I feel like people of my generation have it harder than anybody else that has ever lived ever. Okay? <laughs> For real, though, there is so much going on all the time. There's like phones in your pocket that are like beep, beep, boop, and your watch is telling you that somebody is calling, and your glasses can like see who people are, and your computers. There's fucking radios, there's people on the street, there's the voices in your head to top it all off. <laughs> it's a problem. I mean, could you imagine? Do you ever think about your great grandparents? Like, they wouldn't even be able to comprehend Instagram. You know what I mean? <laughs> Darius, hitherto would look upon the tablet and see what appears these photos of scantily clad women. <laughs> what? That's what they sounded like then, right? <laughs> That's when I was told. But the thing is, is like, technology has moved so quickly that we are being left behind by it. Like, we are at the point now where our devices are actively listening to us so they can gather information to sell us things, which sounds insane, but it's a real thing. Like if 10 years ago I came up to you and I was like, guys, the computer that I have in my pocket is listening to the words I say to sell me pants, you'd be like, <laughs> okay, Tori, all right, why don't you just come with me? We're gonna go visit some nice men with a cozy little room with bouncy balls, it'll be great. <laughs> great-grandparents, they couldn't comprehend that. They couldn't even have that conversation, you know, just like, Darius, hitherto, look upon the tablet, see what appears, it is oranges, the very fruit that I spoke to you about under darkness last night. <laughs> She's a witch! Burn her! Like, what? They wouldn't even be able to understand that things that aren't people listen to them, okay? It's nuts. And the thing that messes me up is like, they're listening to gather information to sell you stuff, you know? It's like, have you ever had this happen? You're just, like, hanging out on Facebook or whatever, and then a friend hits you up, and you haven't spoken to them in, like, ten years, and you're like, hey, what's up? How's it going? And they're like, my life is great. And you're like, that is so cool. Why did you hit me up out of the blue? And they're like, I just wanted to tell you about this great experience that I have to offer to you. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it's called Tara Life, and you can live your life great like me, too. No, I can't, Diane, because I've seen not that great, okay? <laughs> we all see everything. It's so disingenuous. It feels like Facebook is that friend now. And it's all well and fine, you know, until you're trying to avoid something or avoid someone. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys something, and it's going to be shocking, okay? So I want you to, like, take a minute, just get yourself in the space. You know, this is a friend show, so it's going to get really dark. <laughs> I just recently got dumped like six oh, months ago. Yes, thank you. That's the right reaction. You're the first audience who's done that. Because <laughs> the thing is, is I, me, yes, me, got dumped. Okay? I was unprepared for that. I was prepared in a lot of ways in my life. Prepared to let down little nerdy boys and be like, no, it's fine. I was only talking to you because I think you're a nice person, not because I want to have sex. Weird. I was totally prepared to turn down all the creepy old men who talked to me online. You know, like these are things that I was prepared for. I was not prepared to be dumped. The thing is, it sent me into this crazy downward spiral where I'm trying to figure out, like, what's wrong with me? You know, and I've come to the conclusion that I must be crazy. <laughs> right? Because here's the thing you don't just break up with somebody who looks like me for no reason, okay? You never hear somebody be like, oh yeah, I was just hanging out with my super tall, super good looking, super talented comedian girlfriend, and then I was like, nah, I'm going to break up with you for no reason. That's not a thing. <laughs> so I'm sitting there just being like, what's normal? You know, like looking in the mirror, like, is it because my eyebrows are kind of uneven? 
<laughs> is it because my eyes like aren't quite blue and aren't quite green? Like, is that too much? <laughs> is it because I microwave grilled cheese? <laughs>
immediately pooping with the door open on the first date. He's just like, hey, can you hand me that? <laughs> so, what do you want to have for dinner tonight? It's weird. It's weird. So we've been dating. Uh, we've been dating five months. And we just moved in together, which is normal. That is a normal thing to do for people of my generation. <laughs> we don't have a choice, okay? Yeah, like back in the 50s, it was like, gosh, Susie, you're real cute. I think I want to take you out for a molten. Is that all right? Nowadays, it's just like, do you murder people? No? Okay, how's your personal hygiene? Yeah. All right, okay. Where do you live? <laughs> Do you have a roommate? Do you want a roommate? I have like a sexy little roommate, just you and me. You want to like go in on internet together? You want to buy groceries together? Yeah, cook me food. It was one of those things where I was like, you know, a place in Nevada City showed up, and I was just like, yes! And then I realized there's a one-bedroom that's in two stories. Yeah. So the top story is a bed and a sink for peeing in. <laughs> <laughs> and then the downstairs is, like, a living room with a bathroom and a little, like, kitchenette. But the stairs are outside facing oh. the other house on the <laughs> property. So it's like every night I have this choice where I'm like, do I just, like, Spider woman it in the sink right now? <laughs> or is it just like suns out, buns out, like welcome to the day, everyone? <laughs> <Hello. laughs> uh, I am like the most poor that I think I've maybe ever been in my life right now. Like it's insane. Like I've had to cook meals for myself multiple times a week. <laughs> Have you guys heard of this thing called rice? <laughs> there are entire countries where people eat that as a staple. I understand it now. <laughs> it's delicious. No, but it's insane because moving, it costs so much money, right? And I've moved three times in the last six months. And every time you move, it's just like you got to put a damage deposit. You got to clean the house. You got to like pack up everything. You got to buy a bunch of ice cream because you're sad. You got to buy pizza for your friends who helped you move. It's insane. So the other day, I had to pay rent, right? Like you do forever. Apparently, that seems to be the path that we're on. And for the first time in my life, I was like $150 short. So like in my mind, I was like, I have two options, right? I can either sell my body 150 times to 150 different people, which is insane because I do not have the stamina for that. <laughs> Which I don't want to do because that change jar came with me. You know, it's got all my nickels and my dimes and my quarters. I was gonna buy myself something nice, my pants. <laughs> I know your pants. What you gonna do at that time? So I did it. I counted my change jar, and as I was counting it, I remembered all my other little hidey holes, right? So I showed up at the bank just like with this huge backpack, just like. <laughs> and the teller's like, "Can I help you?" And I was like. Fucking hope so. <laughs> I just open it up. I don't say anything. I'm just like pulling out like five quarter rolls and ten dime rolls and a bag of pennies and like seven nickel rolls and then just like a twenty dollar Canadian bill and ten thousand yen, three hundred and fifty Swedish kroner, a twenty dollar bill that I found in a book, and then fifty five two dollar bills. I was just like, here you go. She's like, I need to check with my manager to see if I can buy your money. <laughs> By the way, yeah, it was crazy, but it's fine. In, in a lot of ways, I'm like starting to do real adult things, you know. Like, I got my first car ever this year, wow. this past year. Yeah, yeah. guys, it's amazing. It has seats. <laughs> it has seat belts. It has doors that shut and lock. <laughs> It just doesn't have headlights, which is fine. That's <laughs> no, but it's cool because I like pretend like it's this thing where my life is a horror movie and I have to get home before dark before the monster gets <laughs> But I just don't tell people that. So like I'm out there and I'm just like I start packing up my shit. They're like, hey, Joy, where are you going? 
I thought you were going to be here until 6.30. The show starts at 6.30. I'm just like, the darkness is coming. I have to go.
off the coast of British Columbia in Canada, population of a thousand. And I always tell people that, and they're like, well, that's kind of big. And I'm like, I don't think you understand what an island is, okay? This isn't like fucking Colfax where there's roads in and out of it. Here, you can literally just walk somewhere and you'll be somewhere else. An island is surrounded by water. And there's this fun little thing called a ferry that shuts off, okay? It's like being trapped with a population of a high school forever, okay? I didn't date anybody at all when I was growing up there because, like, you know everybody on the island from, like, diapers to diapers, right? It's like, <laughs> I am disinterested in kissing any of you. And a couple years ago, I brought my now ex-boyfriend there, and I brought him home for the first time, and when we showed up, this is a true story, he walked into the store, and the shopkeep just, like, turned and looked at him and was like, hey, you must be Joy's boyfriend. Has life in California and just listed this huge list of intimate personal details. That are super weird for some random guy you've never met to know, but then it kept happening. So I'm really super cool, and I'm going to bring my new boyfriend home to my island in February, and they already know about it. And I haven't told anyone. That's the fucked up thing. <laughs> I legitimately was on the phone with a friend of mine the other day, and she's like, so my mom called me. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, my mom called, and she was like, did you know that Jory has a new boyfriend? And she's like, yes, mom, because we're friends. How do you know that? She's like, everybody knows! I don't think you understand, like, how small of a town this is. Like, when I was growing up, the most exciting thing that would happen is like a bald eagle would sit and land in the tree. And like, we have a lot of bald eagles, it's not like this is new, but like my dad would run inside and be like, kids, come look at the bird! We'd all like, wow, that's a beaut! <laughs> we care about birds like way more than we should. I called up another one of my friends, one of the few people who actually stayed on the island because most of us got pushed off because there's no jobs and we like ourselves and we don't just want to live in a shack. And I called up my friend and I was like, so what's new? And she's like, well, I just put a cupcake out on the compost. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, well, and the birds are circling. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Tell me more. And she's like, well, there's these two ravens, right? And they're both on either side just looking at it. And I'm like, oh, fuck, tell me about the ravens. <laughs> Are they, like, cocky? Do they look smug? Do they think they're actually going to get that fucking cupcake? <laughs> we were on the phone for, like, an hour while she, like, narrated what was going on. <laughs> they got the cupcake. <sighs> Somebody told me recently uh, that I looked like a bird person. <laughs> for my upbringing. <laughs> we actually, um, when I was a kid, I had two pet crows. It was super cool. Don't tell anyone that's illegal. I could probably still get in trouble for it. <laughs> I found out the reason that you're not supposed to have pet crows, though. It's not for people. Yeah? It's not, it's not like, don't do that because you're going to hurt the crows. It's because the crows fucking remember everything. Okay? <laughs> there was two crows. One of them was like this super cool crow. Thanks, Storm Crow. Yeah, of course he was named that. And the other crow was my favorite crow. He only had one eye, and he was named Blackbeard, and he was a pirate. And he liked to sail the seas, and I just need to mention I was eight, okay? So, so Blackbeard was going to be, like, my best friend in the entire world. And every day after school, I would like, go and hang out and be like, what's up? And he'd be like, bah! <laughs> And then one day I came home from school, my dad was standing there, and he had that, like, your pet just died look. Aww. If you've grown up rural, you know that look. It's a very specific, like, hey. <laughs> so it turns out that motherfucking Storm Crow pecked Blackbeard to death. Oh, oh my god. That's fucked up, guys. Oh That's why they call it a murder of crows. Okay? <laughs> for no reason, which is also coincidentally why I moved to America. <laughs> Crows do not forget. 
<laughs> so after we used to like hang out at our house, I'd like go outside and he'd be like, ah! and he'd be like, fucking get you someday. He's <laughs> probably still around. <sighs> I think we have time for one more fun story. We do, and then I'll get Shawnee up here for you guys. Um, this is a story that I like to tell sometimes, and I, I only really like telling it um, because when I do, people come up to me and tell me their own story. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So if you think of one, feel free to come tell me. But this is the story of how I almost shit my pants in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in here has shit their pants as an adult, okay? <laughs> and if you're not an adult yet, you will. You will. You will. We don't have as much control as we think we do, okay? Life is chaos. So it was, it was my first time in New York as an adult, and I was trying all these new things and going to all these new places, like this cool place I'd never heard of called Panera, <laughs> which is not cool or good for your stomach, apparently. Um, so I ate it, and I got onto the train, and I was riding the train, and I felt, you know, that feeling. Right? That feeling where you're like, I think I need to avoid my bowels immediately. <laughs> and I was, I was legitimately, like, sizing up the train. Like, well, there's a homeless man with a bag over there. I think he's probably my best choice because he gets it. <laughs> but there's also, like, a young mom with a baby, and, like, she might also understand. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, who I can call in to help me. And the fucked up thing here is I had been in New York one day. And I came in under cover of darkness. I was staying with a friend of mine who I do not know very well. Um, and I get in. Everyone is asleep. He meets me. He says, hey, here's the house. Here's the key. Uh, come and go as you please. I have a roommate. You might not see him. Bye. That was it. So I'm on this train spiraling into, like, who fucking knows where. And I need to go now. So I get off the train. I'm at the right stop. I know that fucking much. Have any of you guys been to New York? You know the buildings they have? I think they call them brownstones that all look the fucking same. Yeah. There'll be like seven or eight of the same house, and the only thing that's different is like if you decided to put a plant out front and somebody hasn't stolen it yet. So I'm walking up and down the street and up and down the street, and I'm literally like at the point where I'm going to dig a hole, like on the sidewalk. I'm like, I don't fucking care. I see this little tiny like Chinese bodega, and I'm like, they have to help me. Side note, in Canada, you have to let somebody use the bathroom when they come in. You have to. Not so, I found out. I walked in, and I was like, I have to use your bathroom. And she's like, we don't have a bathroom. And I was like, no. I don't think you understand. You do have a bathroom, and I have to use it. And then she looks at me, and she stands up all like five foot one, as straight as physically possible, and looks me in the face and just says, we don't have a bathroom. I'm like, okay. I don't want to fucking die. <laughs> so I'm back out on the street, running up and down. I literally had the key out. I tried every single door until finally one of them opened. I fly in there past a strange human being who I have never seen before in my life, and I just have enough time to say, Hi, I'm Dorian. I'm so sorry! Before I run up to the bathroom. You can guess what happened next. And that poor, sweet, innocent roommate um, had just enough time and patience to wait until I got out and say, Hey, is there anything I can do? And I was like, No. And he's like, Okay, bye. And I never saw him again. <laughs> so horrified to think what story he was possibly telling me about right now. <laughs> um, the moral of that story is everybody shits. Everybody shits embarrassingly at some point in their life. And please tell me about it. I want to know. I want to feel better. Um, my name is Joy Phillips. That was my set. Thank you.